Okay, it's recording. Everything's good to go. Hello guys, sit down and the show is starting right now. Right now. I now have the rice cut here. Alright, ready? You guys ready? Can definitely continue the discussion after this. Okay, welcome guys. Welcome to Ruby Tuesday number 58. <laughs> Uh, so, I got complained that the Wi-Fi is not working, but I tested this out by working, so, so it's not my problem. It's only your problem. So, yeah, uh, so this event is probably brought to you by Rapid River, which is this company, and also KL Rapid Brigade, and uh, Wi-Fi is this, Fuba 2000, it's not 200. Uh, exclamation is 2,000 exclamation mark, so don't think that that's one. Uh, okay, so who's the first timer here? First timer? First timer? Nice, nice, very nice. No, no, not just a timer. If you guys don't know already, it exists mainly on the Facebook group, so if you are not part of the group yet, you can go to facebook.com slash group slash KLXRB and join the group. Uh, we uh, usually post the event updates or any announcement or anything there. And we have a website called movingbrigade.my that we brings to the Facebook group. Uh, we also host our events on meetup.com, so if you want to follow the events, uh, do go to meetup.com slash movie and uh, you know, uh, join the group. And uh, we also have a GitHub account, so you can go and check out as a not many new things, but there's some cool things there. Um, we also are Slack, so uh, if you're on Slack, please go ahead and so add yourself to the Ruby My Slack channel. Uh, you go to rubygrade.my slash uh, sorry, Slack underscore invite or back to the um, and get yourself uh, invited to the Ruby Malaysia Slack channel. Uh, though not very good. <laughs> So, uh, I'm Jimmy, so I'll be usually hosting, uh, but you know, sometimes Tristan will host, sometimes... I cleaned up your... Oh, really? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Why is it scrolling so slow? <coughs> can, you, can, you, can you clean up all the rest as well? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm your host for the day, and uh, please remember to introduce yourself to your neighbors. Uh, this is a social event. Uh, <laughs> So I forgot to bring my name back. <laughs> so please tell your neighbors your name. Uh, and uh, at the end of this, there's a thing called Ruby Parking Lot. I've changed it from Ruby Tips to Ruby Parking Lot because I learned this word recently. Uh, parking Lot. Uh, so we have stand up every day uh, at uh, one of the companies I work with. And we do blocker up and parking lot. So blocker up is basically blocker, tell everyone about your blockers, right? Parking lot is like tell everyone about things that you like them to know. So it's like tips, ah. So it will be parking lot, right? No, no. Okay. Why is it the parking lot? I don't know, but they like to use. It's like parking lot. Okay. Anyway, so uh, this is a session where any one of you can come up and share something you want, uh, and the floor will be open for. I don't know, five, ten minutes, depending on how many time, uh, how, how much time we're at. So, without further ado, I think Taiwan is very right first term. Start from anywhere. Huh? What? Oh! <laughs> so, Taiwan is going to go first. Oh, wait! Huh? Second. What? Second? Oh, second. Okay, okay, okay. So, Taiwan is going to go second. Uh, so, before this, uh, thank you. Yeah. So, I uh, we have a survey for you guys, the candies, So. Uh, if you would be so kind, go to this link, uh, bit.ly slash klxrv2018. I would like to get your feedback on stuff, you know, how you feel about <laughs> the event. Okay, so please go ahead and uh, answer the survey. If you have like five minutes, ten minutes, it's not going to take a long time. So just, yeah, just this one. So without further ado, I would like to introduce the talks uh, for today. Uh, we'll come back to the time each other. <laughs> Uh, we would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, Yushan. She's going to be talking about. Yes. 
Yes. I need a chair, or you can just. Contractors. Right. Our <coughs> team consists of two people, me and my new developer. Right. Our app is mainly built on Ruby on Rails. We don't have any native apps yet. Uh, but our site is mobile friendly, so to say. So most, most of our users are either desktop users or mobile users. Um, why construction? Is because it's an industry that's in severe need of digitization, right? And we're basically here to help them out. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, um, let me just tell you three reasons why I'm here today. Right? There's three reasons why I'm here to talk today. Okay. First off, uh, someone really important contacted me on Slack the other day. He was actually our prime minister. To give a Ruby Tuesday talk. Now, it's not him I say, oh wait, this is fake. Right? It's my idea with an H. But he really knows about it, so it's been cleared up. Okay. Um, the second reason why I'm here today is because of my lead developer, uh, Louis. So, since the day I joined my company, he has been bugging me to give a Ruby Tuesday talk almost every week. And we meet exactly the same time. <laughs> um, and the third reason why I'm here today is because I want to share my experience, um, what I've learned so far, and how my journey has been. So, I hope you learned something from this. If not, I hope you just enjoy the ride. So, the title of my talk today will be about road to competency. So, when I'm talking about road to competency here, I'm talking about my journey as a, to become a competent developer. So, the topic of my talk today, I'm going to be talking about my workflow, basically. I'm going to be starting off talking about what is it. And mainly, we're going to be talking about what are the steps of my workflow. So that'll be the main chunk of where we spend our time, and I'll be going detail uh, on what is it. And lastly, I'll be ending with why the developer workflow in general. Okay. Now, um, so that we're all on the same page today, so that we can you know do things together. Let's assume all of us have a specific feature request. Okay. So one of the models in my app is called Database <coughs> Order, and for this specific feature request. We just want to search a specific model. So a model here is called place orders, but let's just keep it short, just call it EO. So we want to be able to search our EO. Okay. Back to my workflow. Um, what am I referring to when I talk about my workflow? So basically, my workflow is what I do from the start of me getting a specific feature request to the end of me pushing it up uh, to production and it's really news. <coughs> So what are the steps of my workflow? Um, Mock-up, plan, develop and test, and basically the last check of big bucket. Uh, mainly we'll be talking about, oh, sorry, check big bucket, yeah. So mainly we'll be talking about um, the first three sections. So how I mock up, uh, what I do when I'm planning, and you know, developing and testing in general. So mock-ups, right? So because we are a two-man two developer team, uh, we basically have to do everything from mockups to the production, really. Uh, why are mockups important? Because we feel that it is a very good, it's a very good tool for you to bridge the gap between the client and the developer. Right? Well, when you told a feature request, when the client wants a feature, right, he has in his head a specific feature request and how it, works, how it looks like. 
and he turns it to you, right? If he doesn't communicate it well, you're gonna have your own ideas of what it is. And to develop a lockup is just extremely crucial to get everyone's goals aligned. Okay. So let me show you an example um, of our app that we had. So here is our mobile view of our app. So it's to fit some, we have a model called purchase orders, and here we see purchase orders in that, right? We see all the purchase orders, right? So each line is purchase orders. So the first one and second one, you can see many different information, like the title, uh, number, the date, Google status. So for this specific um, project, this specific feature, what I had to do was I had to basically get information from another model. So the, how my model worked was with a PO, a PO always had an MR, right? So if you have a PO, yes, there's always something called an MR. And in this specific case, we had to demonstrate what, who created this MR. So on this PO, we had to say, okay, this person created this MR. Okay. Very simple stuff, right? So the mock-up, fairly straightforward. What I did, that came up. Um, that. So I just put a person's name on the side and I'm um, done. But upon further review, uh, one of the biggest problems was knowing the creator. Okay. So the problem was there are actually two creators here, right? So someone if someone can create an MR and someone can create a video too. So the moment you look at this and anyone looks at this, they don't know what that specific thing is referring to. You know, there's an ambiguity here, what what is that or who is that? What it's doing. Second, second thing is, I was told that people usually read from left to right, so most of the information when you want to, when you want to put them, you should put it on the left side, so it's easy to read. And second thing was bolding. Bolding is a very big issue, and you shouldn't bold stuff really daily because if you bold it, then at least they have to look at it the first time. When you look at a page, if it's first time, it's good. first thing they notice. And it is super important, then it's fine. But in this case, was it crucial? Not really, it was more of a convenience for anyone who was doing it. Okay. So back to the drawing board I go, right? And the next thing was I came up with this. Right? I moved everything so on the right hand side, I moved everything to the left. Uh, specifically put you know a small place and say MR and skip it I Doesn't really say who created it, but at least there's less ambiguity here and no voting. So how did I achieve this really? I used a software called Adobe XD, which I'm sure most of you have heard of. Uh, I'm not sure if you have used it. But so what we're gonna do for this, I'm going to show you what was steps taken or how I created a mock-up of my searching my purchase order. Okay. So I have a video already, I believe. Okay. So let's look at the page. Oh shit. <laughs> I think it moved the the presentation screen. Uh, exit the full screen for your presentation. Yeah. Okay, so we we'll do here on our works. Okay. So firstly, we have the page, right? So I push on the title, and this is all my index, all the brackets here. And I want to add my purchase search bar right in the middle there. So what I do, I turn over like the create a new uh, web template, drag it in, literally just drag, put it there, copy and paste, resize it. Um, easiest thing that you can do. Make sure everything fits well, correct screen size. Next thing you know, we need to block up this section, right? What do I do? Easy. Just draw a big white box over it. And cut out the border and then black slate. So that's how I start. Right. Next thing we have, we have a search bar, right? So create a search bar. Now we'll start it a bit. It's gonna look a bit nice. Right. Uh, I give it a bit placeholder name. So search PO here. The next thing we need to do is we want to create our button, right? So I create my button over here. Uh, give it a name. Okay. Obviously, make it look sexy too. Center it a little. Give it a style, nice. And initially, I also give it a color. So follow our app scheme color and change a bit of fonts, you know, do a bit of tweaking. I love front end. Uh, 
The next thing I do is I copy everything else. So what I do? Literally, I copy another chart from my code of the mockup, paste it in, and just did that. Voila. Right. So that literally took me two and a half minutes. I mean, is it? You know, is it nice? No, it's not really that nice. But it could be better. But uh, anyone who's looking at it definitely won't comment. So <laughs> that's the main idea. And the thing is here is to learn that it is very easy to create mockups, and really it's not just for fun and anime. Anybody can learn it. So I literally learned this in um, a day or less. XD is a very good tool. Uh, you click a you click on a button. You also get a link that you can share immediately, and it visit that link, and you can see the mockup on the phone. If you plug your phone onto the laptop, you can also see the mockup directly on your phone. So really good tool. Um, okay, next. So next, after my mock-up, specifically what I'll be going to is I'll do most of my heavy planning. Okay. So what is my plan? So basically my plan is a list of to-dos, right? A to-dos, uh, mainly to-dos telling me what kind of, do I need to write test? Are there any pages that this uh, feature affects? Are there any other pages, right? We know that it affects PO effects, but one page. Are there any other pages that it affects? Does it need a mobile page? Does it need a mobile friendly? Right? So this is a checklist of items that I need to do. Okay? After getting a checklist of stuff that I picked out, right, I go towards the approach, right? The implementation, I worry about you know, how, how should I approach this? Um, should I, what kind of tools do I use? Composition, inheritance, should I use a gen? An external service, right? Obviously, experienced developers here they really have the upper hand there because they have worked with many different tools and they know which tools work best in a specific situation, right? But for me, what I like to do is I just like to look at the files that I'm going to touch. So if I'm specifically going to play with PO, index, I look at the controller, I look at the model, and I see okay what are things to keep it, keep an eye out for. Um, what is here, you know, is there anything that I, that I can reuse or follow again? Okay, so it's my way of uh, dealing with it. Why? Firstly, because memory. <coughs> so I'm really bad at remembering things. It's a very good, it's a very good thing to have a checklist, you know, once I push it up, I remember, okay, this is all the things I need to do. If your feature request is big, right, or if it's small, let's say sometimes it might turn big, right, okay, all I have to do is this. Then suddenly halfway through, you decide, oh, I need to refactor this instead. Oh, there's this actual bug that I need to fix, and you know, there's a lot of things, and having a checklist down really helps things go smoothly. And next thing is your flow. Um, being able to get back into flow easily with a plan. So, what do I mean? Today you're coding, right? You finish, pack up your bag, you leave. You come back next day, and you start over again. The problem is, you cannot get back to work immediately, right? You're gonna have to, you're gonna retrace that, like, where was I the last time? Right. Was I here? What kind of bugs were I facing? Where exactly was I? Which file? So having a plan really lets you get back into flow much more easily. And second thing is, it also solves a bit of a uh, problem with context. <coughs> so what do I mean by that? So let me just give you an example. So you just, that's you, sitting on a computer, right? Think of a specific solution for a problem. So next thing you know, you think about this solution and that your brain is just full of many different styles, you know, going through this callback. You know, you're going through this many layers of um, files, right? Someone comes by, and you, it is certainly, interruption comes up, they, you forget what you were doing, and you look back at the code, and you, you can't tell where you were, or what you were doing. So having a plan really, you know, nail it down, is a very good thing. So what I would like to do is, I brought a very special technique of mine, called uh, writing chicken scratch. So, I literally write down, or I scribble on the book as best as I can, and I hope that I can read it later. Um, and that's my plan, generally. So, what you can take away from this is whether it's you know writing it down or whether it's using a software, you should always have a plan and be able to keep track of things that you do. You do. Okay. So let's go back for specific feature requests and how we plan, how we plan it. Right. So searching purchase orders, right? <coughs> First, if we do mock-up, okay, we need mock-up. Can we think about the views? Do we, does it need to be more friendly? Okay, it needs to be more friendly. The next thing, I think, other pages. So it's a very important thing which I've learned over time. Uh, is there any other pages that affect? Right. 
So we only have Q, which is already text. That's all we're thinking about. So we see all the which is always. So next thing, we have found out that actually there's another layer, which was um, projects and specific POs. So what I mean by this, so you have a specific project, so KRA, and that had its own PO. And if you had another project, then they also had their own PO. So now, I have two requirements. I had basically a search function for a general PO, and another function for searching PO in a specific project. Okay. And then going through the plan, now I figure out, okay, do I need specs? Well, obviously, of course, I need specs. Um, it's a very important search feature, make sure it works well, um, perfectly. So, the next approach was to implement my actual search functionality. So what I did here was I found out, I looked at the files again, and I found out that we were already using a gem called Red Set. And it was best that we use this development. It was best uh, that we use what we had instead of getting something new. Okay. So if any of you booked Red Set before, it's basically a very easy gem to use um, to construct uh, search forms. So first thing you need to do is decide what kind of columns you want to search, right? So for PO, we wanted to search description, PO number, um, and user's name. Okay? In this case, what do we do? So for brand set specifically, you had to combine all of them, all of the names of your columns, and then join your underscore or, right? And at the end, you append it with an underscore con. So con stands for contain. So you're searching for anything that contains a specific term in any of these columns. Okay, so how would you use it in your app? So it would be something along the lines of this, right? You call it <coughs> this or this dot ransack. So think of ransack as an alias for search. Yeah. So you're searching on business orders and you're searching which of business orders have the term Mahate in either its description, PO number, or username. And, and you get the result of it. And you, and you get back active record, relation array, and you can do stuff with it. So that's the planning stage done, right? So now we're over to the majority part of where we spend our time developing and testing our feature. So developing and testing, right? Whether you have PDD or not, um, it's up to you. But tests mainly are a good is a good tool to have to make sure that everything works perfectly well normal. Okay. Then the hard part here is actually refactoring. Right? Anybody can develop, anybody can test, but refactoring in and of itself is um, a very complex chunk. Right? So you have simple stuff like you know naming variables and methods. So you make sure you know you need, did you name stuff well? You come back six months later and you look at your code. Do you, can you tell exactly what it does without looking at the implementation details? Right? Then you can go to slightly more advanced, right? The complex functionality. What is this the right solution to use? Like, should, I, should I even be using this yet? <coughs> um, this obviously again comes with experience. Experience developers really have a hand here. Uh, they they can tell, all right, this is not a good solution. You know, we shouldn't be using this yet because it uh, hits our database. We should use an external service instead. Um, the next thing is extraction, right? So what I mean by extraction? So usually your your code has um, a lot of complex functionality. So most of the time you might dump a lot of code in your controller or your model, right? Complex functionality, and it does more than it's supposed to do. And what I've learned so far is your ability to extract it out and into anything, into service objects, and query objects, or into concerns, etc. Basically what it means is, what I've learned is extracting out into different classes. So the ability to just create classes and move stuff into that, right? That's the gist of it. I mean, it may give you special names, like Objects, but essentially just creating classes and moving those functionality, complex functionality, into those classes. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I did in my app. Right, so search my purchase order, this is what I did. I have a form, right, so I implemented the rent set, and when I submit the form, it goes to my controller and calls a specific line of code. Okay, but it's order not rent set, perhaps cute. Okay, is there anything that I do better? Is there anything that I could do better here? Suggestions. Yes. 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 Yes.
Wait a minute. Okay. So what my lead developer told me was um, the first thing first was if you can see a text field tag, the description or number or username card, right? There's something associated with the view, and it shouldn't be. See, the information of Ransack shouldn't be attached to the view, right? The view should should be done. We give it a search query. Bam, okay, I search this and I give it to the controller, right? You shouldn't be worried about how you implement things. Secondly, is our PO was cut, was scoped to project, right? So I'll see our project there with frames things like that. So the second thing was, our, again, our view is done. It shouldn't be knowing anything about the project, and that stuff should just be handled somewhere else besides the view. So what I came up with was this, right? Form, it's much smaller now. Um, what I did was I merged my project ID, the stuff that I need, um, into my params, and I called it my controller instead. Right. So less stuff on the view, more stuff on the controller. Okay. Now, the majority of the chunk, so again, where did the ransack term go? So it went to our object here, which is on the query. It's basically a query object, and since our controller is only worried about that, um, giving you the right DOs to display, it shouldn't be worried about finding the right DO. Right? Find the right DO, then I give it to another object, which is place order query. So, my place order query class, I call it something like this. Purchase order dot ransack, and I told it what to search by, and I told it Right? Is there anything that I can prove here? Uh, yes, a couple of suggestions. Okay, yes, it's true. <laughs> yes, that was, that was true. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Anything else? Replace the param. Sorry? Replace the param search. Replace the param search. Uh, not really. Yeah, param search is basically a string really. Yeah. So okay. there's nothing to replace it by. Um, yeah, so it took me a while to. But in the end, it was basically. If we needed to add more columns into here, and this is an example, right? So for my actual implementation, there was actually about seven columns or eight columns. You can imagine that this key was going to be really long, right? It's going to be really, really long, and that's annoying. So what I did was instead of refactoring it out, and I gave it, I call it query key. So it was so the query key was just would join everything in an array with underscore or and then append underscore con at the back. I have to symbol it. So here, it doesn't have to worry about um, how it looks anymore. It's on, on a random method. Right? So now, here, if I wanted to add any new columns, it's very easy as, you know, adding it into the array. That's it. Okay. Um, so, mainly, that's how I work on this feature. So, workflow recap here. So, what I specifically did? Mock up, right? Make sure that. It looked correct, like we, we went through a problem, it didn't look alright, somebody looked at it and did not understand, so you go back and you make it and you make sure that it looks fine. Next thing you plan, you know, how you're gonna approach the problem, what files are you gonna touch, right? Did you get everything done correctly? And the last thing is you develop a new test, right? Develop a new test, after that you refactor. And the last thing I do is I push up the big bucket and I check one more time, right? I check it one more time because I have specific reasons because I might leave something out along the way. Now, why do I develop my workflow? Okay, I develop my workflow because over the past couple of months, I have been working with a company and a lot of my pull requests has been commented on, and you know, there's things that I could be improved on. Okay, I have technically improved over time because less comments, but still, any big features require uh, review, right? And I have missed stuff all the time. So because I've developed this workflow, you can imagine I, I missed stuff all the time. I developed a feature and I forgot that it's good. it needs, needs to be on another page, right? Or maybe in a mobile view that's it's about um, I missed out specs, missed out maybe unclear naming, uh, name was unclear, buy not inside, buy me cry inside, you know. So I've literally developed all this workflow because I make all these mistakes. And hopefully one day, right, I won't have to use the workflow now because I know intuitively uh, what to do. So for now, I rely on this workflow for the majority of my work. So, I think my talk, uh, so my goal is to obviously keep learning, and hopefully one day 
I can make a pull request that's good enough that I don't have, doesn't have to be renewed. Hopefully the day comes before I die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, questions for Shane? I have one question. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, go ahead. How strict do you currently follow this workflow? Uh, quite strict. Yeah, because I just don't like when someone comments on my like when when we put on my pull request, <laughs> I just I'm like shit. I didn't do something well. You know, it feels like I didn't do a good enough job. I didn't do a terrible job. <coughs> my minute, so that's why I follow it up. Even with the small features. Even with the small features, yes. Especially the small features, because then, because the small features are always small. Because bad fix the bug, push it up, and you don't think about anything else. Right? You know, it's really fast to go through all this workflow and the small features. Right? It's added like five minutes or ten minutes. Like, yeah. Do you read your own pull request? Uh, when I push it up, then I read your own. Yeah. That's all. But it's very hard to read your pull request because you have to look at it with fresh new pair of eyes. Right? If you say, okay, actually, you know, this code shouldn't be here because. But because you just developed it, you just wrote it, you're like, oh, okay, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. So when someone new comes along and they read the code, then they can spot, oh, yeah, no, this is not good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I caught myself doing stupid things a few times by just going back and reading it. Yo, yeah. I don't know what I guess. Do that a lot. <laughs> Questions? Um, yeah. So do you play only on features, or not hot fix that requires something urgent to you apply? Your uh, yes, mostly, I mean, uh, if you have hot fix it, it's pretty easy. If the page is above, right, if if it's above and everything is there, then you have to draw a mock up, right? You have to check if it works on mobile. Uh, is there any other pages to work? That's fine, then you just, you know, after that, then just ignore it up, right? And, yeah, so it's a pretty simple process in general. Cool. I have one final question. Yes. Who here is invited by Sheng? <laughs> no, there's more, there's more, there's more. <laughs> okay, give her another round of applause. Okay, okay uh, our next speaker is Kevin. He's going to be talking about Ruby and what's up with Ruby. Give her a round of applause for Kevin. <laughs> Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. 
and thank God for having one by the way, so 2019. And moving on, so this happened but recently like with NPM package, so it's like download applications, code injected into it, and everyone got panic, like due to like and this guy like here saying I'm obviously creating card number with the password from your side and here's how basically telling you uh, how it does that everything. And then there's a uh, came from the event stream itself as well. And the thing is, because this happens because there's a lot of dependencies on that, relies on that. It's like 2,000 people like doing the dependency and like everyone like contributing it. It's like uh, don't know who's maintaining the rep for anymore, like what's the going on with it. So, but the thing about Ruby is like it's only maintained by core people, and, like they actually go through it as well. So that's the bad, that's the good part of Ruby. But and then WordPress having like nightmare as well. Like, Oh, five or is coming, and everyone is panicking. You don't want to break which blog site you're going to break, or website you're going to new uh, site you're going to break and stuff. And but Ruby is like two point six coming, but so I started with two point six. But the problem is I just need to upgrade it. But how many players should upgrade as well, right? So but it's very important to actually upgrade two point six so you keep up with, with it. So you can't just complain Ruby is slow and uh, memory is constantly costing a lot and stuff. But they are coming up with a lot, like I mean, especially if I've seen the memory. So, thanks to Eric Patterson, by the way. <laughs> so, one of the other is that Bundle is available to Ruby 2.6, and they have an NF Rangers now, and it's a new kind of NF and like new perception option. And also, like, okay, it's secure render, but they still come up with another random dot uh, bytes. And there's a rhythm down there as well, and there's a range. And hidden and differences is doing it as well. And performance wise, they try to work around, they realize that's like, a lot of issues with performance, so they try to actually improve the performance with garbage quality and stuff. So, and new parameter like moisture hash as well. Also, it comes with some bugs too. So, obviously, when it comes out, it's new, so it's going to get some bugs. So, it's always happening. So, by the way, Ruby 2.6, like, uh, <coughs> it's not a, like, it's not some people thought it's going to be like, oh, James to RB, but that's not going to happen. So, that's, uh, it's been changed to the RB, but what they do is they just make it to a Ruby. So the proper way of I guess, so I don't know if they should go to a gems to RB uh, or like make it to Ruby itself. So it's so now it's like putting it like more like R of or RB now. So and that's a big part. So this is pretty true uh, three point oh and this guy right after you show it. So as you can see like they try to solve it, but I think it's like resolved by now, but I'm not sure yet, so I mean they put it is I just took today. <laughs> and I went with a PR community, but they didn't change any stuff, so that's quite good. And you can see from the previous cell we have a lot of the so I went about it. So and so you need to install a bundle gem to bundle, but bundle is the install. That's the question as well. So <coughs> but the good thing is it has better integration with regions. So happy for that, like oh I mean, I'm just And RMB and still allows uh, to install it. It's like, that's what it's like, but the weird part is the ocean. So I don't know why they like, now we are 2.8, like, it's strong, like, so it's like 2. year stuff. But you can still install my as a gem and it still works. So it's pretty weird. It's like, I mean, like, not weird, so yeah. And it's part of Core Ruby now. And Talking about it, the error of the range, so when you use the old version like 2.5, it's somewhat of load and it can be at 25. The new one has a new endless range, so it doesn't have any. So one is like 1 to 10, but like now you just put 1, so it's like top top. It's like, you know, you don't have to put any more, but it's like, you can be done. And then there's a new kind of error, so like you know, error is you can see. So currently there's two methods, range, and error. And this was the old, the old, I mean, the, uh, the old one. And now it's the new one, like it's basically like less depth against more less need to type out so but it's good. So actually it increases your speed as well. So and I realized that this room is snap, so I didn't know what's really snap basically. So so I just figured out okay, it's actually a piece of package, so we're having an issue with it. And you just uh, especially having difficulty installing, especially Linux is strong. So you just use snap as a package, like something like this. I think actually it's not like a kind of show like this. Yeah. So the way like it's just important like the package, so it's now visible as well. Uh, 
and there's a new exception options. So you, you, you get an exception if you can't convert them. So let's say you do A and it's an unknown error, right? But now it can like, add a new exception to it, but new, so it's an exception false. So basically, like, uh, you're changing it a bit, so you control your behavior, but I don't know if like, it's a good thing or not. But obviously, it's, a, it's something like it's good, I guess. So, but this, uh, there's some arguments still going on that I was like reading about it, but they had a new bike at the <coughs> Reddit class. It's not, not completely something new because they can recognize it. So, uh, that's a secular thing as you can but then why? But then, just because it's in time faster than you can so it speeds. But, see, the argument is like, it's a security in this speed, so you're going to like, uh, uh, not using security, but you're going to like focus on speed instead, use it, would it? But yeah, that's the argument still going out there. But, yeah. And there's a range, so there's a new method to uh, relate to it, but it's equivalent to the bridge that we made. So, <coughs> and in the end, the difference basically is the two methods added uh, to the power of 2.6, but similar to like you get the bridge and stuff. So, it's like different sets and like union, like unions together in different streets, or you can see like one, two, three, four, five, and like different streets. <laughs> Thomas White, so this one of it is like, uh, Always like to raise the form of that condition and like slows the calls from hell. But it seems more effective when pretty many hatches than an elements. It's basically just like focusing on the short living hatch objects. And based on its speed, it was like uh, thanks to the one gives what a speaker key did as some um, dried up, you get a 7% equivalent in speed up. And what is based of can we get a uh the of is a very scrub aggregator and but the same test is uh, quite a lot, so. But then, there's another thing he also did uh, performance-wise, was a, uh, uh, <coughs> before that, so. This uh, protocol is not like 1.4 plus time plus as well, so that's one of the things as well. But performance-wise, there's another thing uh, called uh, G, and uh, G, uh, G, uh, G, uh, just in college, you know, I think I just died just in time. So, uh, this argument, I mean, like some, it's like one people are doing a test on this. So basically, it's like this many, it basically compounds the bytes per user C. So my understanding, I haven't really checked it out yet. But uh, it's supposed to be like just the speed. But what happened is uh, when you did it about uh, with it, uh, GIT itself, what happened is uh, you should see like similar like 2.5. So it's the same speed. Uh, so I don't know whether you're going to put like, some issue with it or what, but that's what he figured out when he's like doing it. But when we remove it, it was faster a bit than the 2.5. And thanks to Eric Patterson, he made a lot of memory changes, so it's like, especially the garbage code there, like so. And it helps to reduce it, so you can see it from 2.5, like 2.6, you can like reduce a bit, and the 2.3 uh, didn't come out yet, but I haven't checked out, it's still like, it's still new. And it's what I figured out, so it's, Still, the argument going on about the GIT thing. So, and going on like a new parameter method 2.6 is a new parameter method which it will rely on like simple one line, like I mean not one line. So it's just simplifying the way it works. So, and Ruby toy also combines it. So you don't have to like call it twice. It's just call it once. Like you merge it E and C. Like you don't have to write merge. C, you just write A without version, and you see it like combining it. It's more like the minor changes that kind of annoys you, but now I'll give you the improvement on that. And question is like, everyone asking like, is it going on, but it's like, it should be a real success. So, this be going on, like, you see a trend for me, it's like going down the road, and like, you know, it's moving away. But for me, it's like, it's not, so it's still relevant, it's like, people are still using it. You still need it, so when Rails is like you look at Rails of comparability, they get a lot of improvement like with it so it helps you move you like uh, a lot. So and there are a lot of people working behind the scene like Ruby Core team and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more stuff gonna come out from the 2.6 as well. They realize a lot of things going on and it's, it's just a community itself. So 
the Thai community is actually is quite small niche perhaps compared to other languages, but they're doing a lot of effort to make sure the Ruby is there, like, especially startups here, like they really rely on Ruby for creating a new mobile product. So you probably think about Reddit, but Reddit behind is like Facebook and you look at Flutter, Flutter behind is like Google. But if you look at Ruby Rails, who's behind it's just the community behind that. So it's like when the time comes, like the big people are just gonna kill it or just gonna continue, but you know it's like, so easy to stay. So it's my personal thing. So and she comes up with a um <coughs> that purpose life that makes a part of you happy. So I believe that but like, you always like do your purpose is like to be happy, do what you love and stuff. And Louis is is that so it's not only making you uh, easy to write, but also fun to write. And it's not like creating less stress by like being productive and being able to the code itself and create something out of it. And just to be happy about this, <laughs> so I find it like AWS has some of our groupies, so I'm quite happy about this. So since that everyone like, I'm done, like, yeah. And also, AWS actually uh, open source their pie tracker as well, which is a huge thing as well. So it's the one of the things that we are in with our done, and so I was like, yeah, and he that has been over an interesting article about um, why they use Ruby Rails. But interestingly, they also like say some of the uh, 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 code they actually like use Go for it. When there's a shortcoming, they use Go instead of Go file as like using one string. Yeah, so you might want to read that article. It's like it's quite uh, short, it's not so long, especially so. But it's quite interesting why he like want to do it and be hard like now. Of Microsoft and like, yeah, breaking it there. So, yeah. <laughs> and <coughs> he says that in the end, Ruby is not a product, so it doesn't benefit. It's like, if it's, I don't know how to use it translation in Microsoft. <laughs> so, yeah, I just leave it that. Uh, I just make it a number of users. So, the more I'm going to use Ruby, the more I'm satisfied with myself. It's just showing that the more it's going to be false. It's just true, like, it's, it's like maybe the users will come, but it's about the strong community, the people behind that. That's the thing going on, like keep getting it better and people are prioritizing and things that are more important than focusing on the hype and trend that like people just want it. So it's, it's not just a product, it's a huge thing like, like that. And so what next? <laughs> so what has happened? So we need to wait for Christmas, so that we have a lot of stuff, for example, especially the IT things, like, yeah, just time for collection. So there's a lot of gaming going on there, so I'm not sure how it's going. Uh, come out with that. So, yeah, so I am excited to do it for six, so let's see what it is. And since he can come up with code, I want to come up with my own code as well. So, it's not about which language is better, it's about using the right solution to solve the problem. So, the end of the goal is like you want to solve the problem. So, how you want to solve it is like that's how the project is. And with that, thank you. Awesome, thanks. Do have any questions? Any questions for the one? No questions? Who is excited for 2.6? Actually, uh. Are you excited for 2.6? I'm excited to try. I think you can already try the. I'm not excited. Jit flag, so I'm no. just gonna test that. But there's no really exciting new feature per se. I'm not excited because you have to update all of your legacy <laughs> applications. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one thing. But the thing is, you can usually get like free performance upgrade every time. Yeah. So, yeah. You, so you less, just do want to do that. Less server costs for. Less server costs for, yeah. I know. <laughs> of course. Uh, can't compare it to, to, to yeah, all the gem authors not updating their sorry <laughs> their gems to <laughs> work with a new one yeah so yeah the bundle thing is, is kind of confusing about like <coughs> so you mean that if you have the bundle bundle gem install and the two point six bundle which one will it use will it conflict itself which uh, one those still can use so that's a bit so no has yeah, no don't know how yeah. it works yet. Yeah. But whichever you can, like, whichever happens to be first in your path, right? That's how probably. Yeah. Mm. 
it's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, um, well, Christmas is always a, a exciting time for me because of uh, what Christmas driven environment. <laughs> <laughs> But it's such a pity the guy who has to. <laughs> yeah, the guy who has to stay up like Christmas Eve to push the thing. Push the thing and make sure it doesn't break up. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, I never heard that they have to roll back. So, okay, so that was all the talk. Do you guys enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
It's not tech. It's 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 not specifically like a Ruby tips thing. It's like a project. Like you like. Oh, okay. So I have one. Oh, we have one actually, which you haven't been attending so far. The Dev Company. Yeah, Dev Company. Oh, okay. We actually have a podcast that yeah. uh, we do. That oh we yeah, what happened been... to the to the interview video for? Yeah, we talked so did it. No. Okay, I'm not on vacation yet, but but we have a podcast that we do every Thursday night, so you can watch it live, or you can go to devcomi.com, and you can find the recordings for the pod, past podcasts that we do. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we have we do interviews so that's Cytron, um, swimming again. It's boring if swimming is not there. We don't have anyone. <laughs> So we talk about different things. So if you want to, if you want to listen and find out what we're talking about, please just watch them. Or if you want to actually join <laughs> us, tell us. Yeah. So this is um, that's seven. Yeah. How many episodes do we have now? Uh, yeah, yeah, and then I still haven't uploaded uh, log in the the previous one. Yeah. The one in the, the one that last week. Last week. Yeah. Last week. And there's also the meetups uh, section. Which is going to be empty now because there are no more meetups that we know of uh, coming soon. But there used to be like like all of the meetups that you will, that people say they are going to be having be having a meetup will be here. So if you want to know which uh, which events are having meetups, then you can you can just go here. So basically, you send a pull request, right? Yeah. yeah the but that's automated. So if you use a form, then it already formats it. Properly as a pull request. So submit the form, it sends a pull request. Or you can send a pull request. Or you can, yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Parking lot. Is that a parking lot? Kind of, kind of. I was hoping it to be more Ruby related. <laughs> this is a Ruby parking lot. Uh, no? Nobody? Okay, so if nothing else, uh, I will end this meet up, and uh, I guess I will see you all next year. And then, so I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. So yeah. see you guys next year. Are we happy? <laughs> Feel free to hang around uh, until I guess we kick you out. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, are we having a meetup on January?